Hello dear friends. Today I won't be doing a review about an album. Today I will uh, give you some basic information that you should know as a music and audio connoisseur uh, about the medium, about the great audio medium compact disc or CD. First of all I want to talk about the about, uh, history, who invented it. Then I want to give you some um, basic sp uh, specifications that this uh, audio medium has, like the frequency uh, uh, range and stuff like that, uh, and the dynamic range. Then I want uh, to t talk about a bit uh, about the mastering, how it changed through the years, and a bit about uh, what bad uh, mastering habits uh, that there are, for example like the so-called loudness war that you should google and uh, yeah and at the end I want to give a short uh, conclusion okay first of all the compact disc was invented by the Dutch company Philips and the Japanese company Sony in a collaboration and was first introduced to the public in the year 1982 the first CD player was the Sony CDP-101, uh, followed shortly by the first CD player by Philips. And the first CD that you could actually buy here in Europe was the album The Visitors by ABBA, by the great Swedish pop band ABBA. Okay, now I want to tell you, give you some uh, basic information about the compact disc. When you examine a CD, like here, uh, you can tell it is uh, mainly made out of plastic, called polycarbonate. There is a spiral track molded into the top of the plastic, and the surface of a CD is reflective because the disc is coated with a thin layer of aluminium, but sometimes gold. You know, like here. This, for example, is the first press, I think it uh, was first into, uh, pressed and uh, came out in CD in 1986 of the album The Velvet uh, Underground and Nico. And you can see, like in all normal CDs, it has just a uh, silver surface. And here, for example, at the end of this L version from Mobile Fidelity, uh, of uh, Queen's Night at the Opera. And as you can see here, the surface is really a uh, nice gold, is nicely gold plated and sounds very nice. But I don't think that it sounds uh, so nice because of the of the of the layer, of the gold layer. Now it is uh, mastered really well. It, even compared with uh, with the um, German first pressing on vinyl that I have of this album. So, then I want to uh, tell you the specifications about this format. You've heard, probably heard uh, that uh, a CD has, this, uh, has this, a bit depth of 16 bit. That gives you the dynamic range of, a comp of the, the potential dynamic range that a recording on a compact disc can have. And uh, 16 bit equals 96 dB. So the, the softest or the quietest uh, signal and the loudest can be uh, can be um, 96 dB up, uh, apart. You know, so, so a compact disc has, a, has a, like I said, a potential dynamic range of 96 dB, which is way more than a, a than a vinyl record has. A vinyl record has uh, mostly, like like uh, I've read, about 6 dB. Not more, really. So, uh, and uh, the frequency of a CD uh, can be, uh, you know, you've probably heard this 44.1 kilohertz, but that's the sampling frequency. That's not the frequency that you actually hear when you play the disc. When you play the disc, the the play uh, frequency response is. 22.05 kilohertz. You know the half of this 44.1. Mm. 
because the, the playback frequency is always half of the sampling frequency on the compact disc. It's also something to do with the Nyquist theorem or something like that. That's If, if you want to uh, go deeper into this uh, topic, then uh, you should Google this. Yeah. I want to say something um, about the frequency. You know, uh, a normal, the hearing spectrum of a normal human being ranges from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And most people only hear up to, if, if they have good ears, to, to 18 kilohertz, 16, something like that. And you know, a, 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 a tone, a sinus tone, already with 10 kilohertz is already very high. Um, I, can, I can tell you about it. So, so a compact disc with a playback frequency of 22.105 uh, from 0 to 22.105 uh, kilohertz covers the whole spectrum that a human can hear. So sometimes I think that this, this high frequency or, uh, stuff there that's out there like, like Super Audio CD or Blu-ray Audio as you've heard sometimes I, I don't a bit of snake or I don't think that uh, that you can actually hear it when, when you're human you know a cat can hear up to 65 uh, kilohertz uh, and the dog up to 45 but we're just humans we can't hear that high so uh, that's what I want to tell you and uh, the di uh, dynamic range of 96 dB it's also very, very good and high. You know, it's, it's more like uh, the potential and the dynamic range is even higher than on a vinyl record. And you know how, how audio files um, praise this format. Like, like myself, I also got very uh, many uh, vinyl records that I really love. Yeah, they sound fantastic, if mastered properly. Yeah, and you know, okay, normally a human can hear up to I've heard 140 dB. No, would be the the uh, dynamic range that the human ear can hear. But uh, if you hear a sound that's 130 dB, you will you will probably bleed. You know, it's not good for your ears. So 96 is really uh, all that you need. So for example, 24 bit can have up to uh, 144 dB as uh, a dynamic range. But I think that's that's, that's unnecessary. You, you want to hear a difference of if there is a good recording uh, from 16 bit to uh, 24. Sometimes they, they, they say, uh, tell you that uh, the, um, the curve is much smoother and things like that. No, it's, it, it doesn't work like that. Uh, just Google it. You, you will see that this is mostly, uh, they mostly say this just to, to advertise the product and to, to sell more. Something about the mastering. Okay, let me tell you now something about the mastering. I personally think that some of the best sounding CDs that are out there were mastered between 1983 or even 1982 to 1986. You know, why 1986? I, I don't know why, especially this year, but that was the year when the, uh, when the uh, CD sales first were higher than the sales of so-called vinyl records. And um, and after that year, CDs become, uh, went out from the niche market that they were in for audio, uh, only for audio files, who bought them, and, and CDs were um, uh, uh, much uh, more expensive than they are today right now, uh, to a mass consume pr uh, product after 1986. And, and so the mastering became became slightly worse. Uh, they tried to master it, I think, more for the masses. Sometimes, I think. So, uh, so many of the best mastered CDs, like I said, between 1983 to 1986, or even made just up to 1989 or 81, so called 80s. Uh, that's something that uh, uh, the, the great mastering engineer Steve Hoffman has also Told once you probably know the uh, Steve Hoffman forum. I can only recommend it if you if you don't know it. 
And so in the start of the 90s, so about 1990, they, they began to experiment with so-called denoise filters, where they, where they filtered out, I think, even some parts of the music. For example, the first uh, um, uh, CD releases by Jim Hendrix came out in 1985 on Reprise in the USA, and they had no uh, denoise on, on them. You could really hear the tape if you listen closely to those uh, to those CD versions, and uh, and they, they are the best versions out there on compactors, believe me. Later on, they uh, in I think in 1990 they already used a denoise filter on the thing. Yeah. It's 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 already sounded worse. Uh, some of the worst sounding uh, denoised. Um, CDs that I, I know are the definitive remasters by Genesis from 1994. For example, in the in the song Foxtrot, you can you can uh, hear that in the beginning of the first uh, track on Watcher of the Skies, they filtered out some hi hats of uh, Phil Collins because they thought that uh, the hi hat was uh, some some kind of uh, surface noise, a really terrible, terrible. And also uh, the worst sounding are the 1999 uh, remasters of David Bowie, made by Peter Mew, who was also who also used very much denoising, and uh, uh, really really terrible. So that was uh, the the second uh, the first uh, bad habit that uh, that they used, this de denoising uh, things, but then. The uh, the second worst, and the, that's become very, very popular. Uh, so about in 1994, 1995, uh, the album What's the Story of uh, What's What's Story of Morgan became very popular, and this record is mastered unbelievably loud. Even the first press for, from the 90s, absolutely trashy sound. Uh, and so I, I think so, sometimes I think even that this record uh, uh, gave birth to the so-called loudness war, you know, and it was, it was very successful. And all others looked at it and said, "Man, we gotta master it uh, too. Very, uh, we have to master it the same way, very loud, like this record, to to sell more to the masses." So they made it. And so I think so, uh, many the worst sounding CDs are. are uh, the, the the releases f uh, and uh, reissues that were made from the, the mid 90s, late 90s to to about 2005, 2009. I think since 2010 it became a bit better. Yeah. Uh, you you can't hear no more uh, so, so much clipping like like uh, in the in the old uh, recordings of the time. Re really terrible in the in the late 90s and uh, the zero years, 2000s, the early 2000s. Where CDs sounded really, really crappy, totally like, totally got like uh, shit. Get a Zelda. It's, it's un, un I, I just can't listen to these recordings. So it's really hard. But, but it, it became a better. At least uh, today, like I mentioned before, the the record, uh, Death Magnetic by Metallica, who was that was mastered by, uh, what's his name, Ted Jensen, yeah, at Sterling Sound. And this guy uh, must, and it's 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 even louder than zero dB, and you can even hear clipping on, on, on some parts of it. It's it's terrible. He mastered the last Ghost record, Impera. That is uh, that I can really recommend. It's a nice uh, nice record. That was just released this month, I think. Yeah. And at least today, he just uh, limits the whole sound at zero dB, and that makes it sound way much better, really. But it's still far away from being very dynamic and good sounding, let's say that. And another bad habit of mastering technique that you can have on, on, a, on a compact disc is when they, they use the EQ song, when they use too much equalization. Therefore, a good example for this is the 1997 release or reissues of the Jimi Hendrix uh, albums, mastered by George Marino. They are way too loud. That's, that's first of all, that's loudness war all over the place. 
and the EQs are terrible. He just turned the, the, the bass and the, the highs up, uh, to, totally up. It's, it's, it sounds, it, this is the worst sounding uh, Hendrix CDs and I also think one some of the worst sounding CD releases ever made, uh, masters that are ever done by, by anyone. Re really avoid those, if you can. I'm uh, trying to, to, to make my next review about uh, about the Hendrix record, maybe, let's see. But I'm not, not sure of it. Yeah. So, so if you see, if you master a compact disc properly, without this habit, it can sound absolutely fantastic. And you know, on a, on a compact disc, that's something I forgot to mention. Uh, there's only uh, there there is a binary code on the compact disc. You know, they're just uh, zeros and uh, ones. And the computer, uh, the laser reads this uh, this out as zeros and ones the, uh, from the surface of this compact disc. And uh, and then this binary code goes to a digital analog converter, a so-called DAC. This thing uh, actually uh, uh, computes the, uh, the waveform of the music. And, and I tell you, if, if it's done, if, if a compact disc is, like I said, recorded well, if it's uh, mixed well, and then mastered good, uh, also well, it can sound as good, if not better, as any vinyl record there is outside. But it's a shame that, like I said before, that the so-called loudness war has given compact discs uh, a very bad name, which uh, and digital audio in general, that they do not deserve, if mastered properly. I still hope for, uh, for a CD resurgence when, uh, where the mastering gets much uh, better. Because this format de uh, deserves it. It's, it's uh, one of the greatest audio uh, formats that were ever invented, uh, invented by mankind. Yeah. And I want to tell you uh, one little thing uh, uh, that I also forget to mention. On the first compact disc, there was also a source information. You can see it on this here. Uh, like here. It's called AAD. That means the first A. What well, means that it was recorded analog on tape, I suppose. A. The second A stands for the mixing, so it was mixed uh, analog, and for sure because it's a CD master digital. So you won't find a, a CD that was mastered uh, or or with a source code of AAA that only have uh, tapes or vinyl records. Here, even this, this Queen, uh, Night of the Opera, MFS Eldest has this, uh, yeah, you can see it, analog, analog, digital on it. Yeah. And like I said before, it's a very great uh, sounding version of this, this album. I recommend it. So, now for my conclusion. Compact disc is a very great audio medium for, uh, for uh, that can sound fantastic, and, as, uh, and it's a shame that the so-called loudness and other other bad mastering habits had given it a, 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 a bad name. Uh, also, the frequency range and the bit uh, the uh, dynamic range of a CD is absolutely enough for, for any human hearing. Yeah, and like I said before, like the vinyl resurgence, I still hope for a CD resurgence, because this great audio format deserves it. Thanks for watching and listening. I hope I could give you some useful information. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my channel. Help me, so I can help you. Have a nice day and that's all.